Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Quest Corp Limited Q4 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Balaji Subramanian from IFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you for joining us on the post results conference call for Quest Corp. It's my pleasure to introduce the senior management team of Quest who are here with us today to discuss the result. We have Mr. Guru Prasad Srinivasan, ED and Group CEO, Mr. Kamal Pal Hoda, Group CFO, Mr. Kushal Maheshwari, Head Investor Relations and Strategic Finance, Mr. Lohit Bhatia, President, Workforce Management, Mr. Pinaki Kar, President, Global Technology Solutions, Mr. Anand Sundar Raj, President, OAM, and Mr. Shekhar Garisa, President, Product-Led Businesses. We will begin the call with opening remarks by the management team, and thereafter, we will open the call for a Q&A session. I would like to now hand over the call to Mr. Kushal Maheshwari to take proceedings forward. Thank you, and over to you, Kushal. Thank you, Balaji. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our Q4 FY24 and full year FY24 earnings call. The information, data, and outlook shared by the management during the call is forward-looking, but subject to prevailing business conditions and government policy. All forward-looking statements are subject to economic growth or other risks faced by the company. Please refer to slide number two of investor presentation for the safe harbor clause. With that safe harbor clause, I will now hand over the call to our group CEO, Guru Prasad Srinivasan, for his opening call. Over to you, Guru. Thank you, Kushal. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. During FI24, we focused on profitable growth, and our year-long initiatives have resulted in our best operating results. We have to achieve the highest ever and quarterly and annual EBITDA. We had a number of projects throughout the year that have helped us to achieve our results. This is our seventh consecutive quarter of sequential increase in EBITDA, reflected in predictable and non-linear growth of 46% in EBITDA versus revenue growth of 15% during the same period. Uh, same time. Also, EBITDA margin have expanded by 80 basis points since Q2 FI23, enabling us to close the quarter at an EBITDA margin of 4%. Our initiatives in cost reduction and productivity improvements resulted in a reduction of FTE headcount from 5,500 in Q1 to 5,300 in Q4. Our investment in technology and process automation have complemented the productivity improvement, the, the productivity improvement project that we ran in association with BCG. We added 149 new contracts with an ACV of 232 crore during the quarter, bringing the total number of new contracts signed during FY24 to 737. We declared a final dividend of rupees six per share, aggregating to rupees ten per share for full year. Our prudent capital allocation policy has resulted in a cumulative debt repayment of 700 plus crore and dividend payout of 488 crores in last five years. We added over 10,400 associates and closed the quarter with a total employee strength of 567,000 by headcount. Key financial highlights for the quarter are as follows. We recorded a revenue growth of 4,910 crores, a revenue of 11% year-on-year growth. We delivered highest ever quarterly EBITDA at 195 crore with 28% year-on-year growth. The improvement in margin is mainly driven by three following parameters. Consistent Margin improvement in GTS platform driven by focus on international geographies and high margin segments. Reduction in founded burn. Operating leverage in OAM platform. Coming to annual financials, 
FI24 stood at 19,100 crore, 11% up against FI23. Annual EBITDA increased by 18% year on year, INR 16,694 crore, and PAT grew up by 26% year on year to 280 crores. OCF to operating EBITDA ratio stood at 67%. We achieved a gross debt reduction of 162 crore, and the net cash position improved by 150 crores during the year, along with a DS4 day reduction by four days to down to 53 days. Few business updates across platform, starting from workforce management. The headcount of the platform reached 452,000, including F&Fs of 32,000 processed during the period. Adding 65,000 associates during the year, driving the revenue growth of 14% year on year, despite of competitive pricing pressure and a significant flat fee business model, our EBITDA margin has stabilized at 2.6%. during the quarter with overall ACB of 150 crores and uh, overall new contract addition for the year of 398 by count. Moving on to specific to general staffing, the business added 10,000 associates in headcount during the quarter led by retail and manufacturing and telecom segment. Uh, the business added 60,000 associates in headcount excluding full and final uh, associates who are in full and final process. During the year, uh, we have crossed 400,000 milestone. We are now among the top five global IT staffing, uh, the global staffing companies by headcount and aspiring to become the largest staffing company globally. Business added 78 new logos in Q4, taking the financial year total to about 274 among the clients added during the year, 30% have used outsourcing staffing for the first time. Evidence that the long-term trend towards outsourcing and formalization is becoming the industry now. Our vertical-focused strategy has continued to yield dividends. <clears throat> Four of our verticals, that is BFSI, retail, <clears throat> telecom, and manufacturing have ended the year with 50,000 headcount of associates with BFSI crossing 120,000 associates. Our manufacturing vertical has been a key growth driver in FI24, adding 22,000 headcount up by 47% during the year. In FI24, we source 28% of our new hiring and 64% of all associates onboarded were deployed in tier two and tier three cities, reflecting our strength in extensive sourcing deployment across geographies. Coming to IT staffing, the softness in overall IT industry is reflected in the fact that aggregate headcount of top five IT companies declined by 11,200 in Q4 and 69,000 in, in FI24. Addition to the IT workforce in India has been the most, uh, mostly through GCCs, who now employ about 1.6 million. We expect this trend to continue along with stabilization in hiring in IT services companies. Open Mandate has seen a very marginal increase uh, to 1,100 positions uh, against uh, 1,000 positions in December 23. As we advance, our focus continues to be on capturing a larger market share in GCC. Moving on to GTS platform, GTS continues its trajectory, delivering an EBITDA growth of 19% year-on-year and 5% quarter-on-quarter. Shift in business mix through increased share of higher value services and favorable geographic mix has supported EBITDA margin expansion, increasing by 208 basis points year-on-year -year and 46 basis points quarter-on-quarter. -quarter. The highlight of the platform are as follows. Connect, our BPM business, continues to maintain its momentum, crossing a milestone of INR 400 crores revenue in Q4. The business closed the order book, order book or an INR uh, ACB of 64 crores. During the quarter, adding nine new logos uh, in the process, the key drivers were BFSI, manufacturing, and retail segment. 
Non-voice BPM process continues to grow significantly with a growth rate of 4% quarter on quarter and 22% year on year. This is largely driven by our collection business, which clocked 24% growth year on year. The growth momentum in CXM business of Allset continues to continues with a healthy growth rate of 29% year on year and 10% sequential growth. High margin international business outperformed with a growth rate of 39% year on year and 13% quarter on quarter. International business now accounts for 74% of overall CXM revenue in Q4 against 69 in the same period last year. In platform, in platform based uh, services, EXM vertical in Alsac added 11 new logos in Q4 with total ACV of 7 crores. International business accounted for 59% of total ACV added vis a vis 31% for the same period last year. The vertical processed, this vertical processed 155 million pay slips in Q4, uh, a growth of 13%. Similar to CXM vertical, international business share increase to, in, uh, share increase to 23% in Q4, uh, FI24 from 20, 21% in the same period last year. Moving on to operating asset maintenance, our focused initiative on margin expansion and productivity improvement led to an increase of 18% in EBITDA margins uh, against the revenue of a revenue increase by seven of 7%. The platform has recorded a margin improvement of 106 basis points year on year. I would like to give you some highlights uh, specific to OEM business. IFMS added 14 new customers with ACV of 30 crore during the quarter. Healthcare, public utility and BFSI are being the key drivers. Food and beverage business saw a gross margin improvement of 19% on an on annualized basis. In security services, our sales pipeline remains robust with 26 new contracts with an ACV of 23 crores in Q1, uh, between Q4 and Q1. Uh, Industrial and IT services are being the key drivers for security business. Telecom active infra business closed the year with best ever revenue and, uh, and FI24 uh, revenue and EBITDA has shown a growth of 30% and 32% respectively. Moving on to product led business, Foundant has achieved its operational break even during the year in Q4 quarter with a reduction in burn. The sales grew by 9% year on year and 13% quarter on quarter, driven by enterprise sales and B2C sales. We successfully launched our disruptive AI product, Founded 2.0, for SEA market, South Asian Asian market, uh, and migrated 100% of our single geography user customer to 2.0, enabling our customer to experience the new product. Our operational metrics on both candidate and recruiter aspect remain positive with consumption up by 18%, NRR above 100%, profile update up by 31% quarter on quarter and highest ever indexed profile added in Q4. CSAT continues to remain healthy at 91%. Other corporate updates, in our associate uh, I mean, in Quest, our associate are most effective brand ambassadors to our customers. I'm happy to announce that in a recent conducted survey uh, in, 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 uh, between Q3 and Q4, our Pulse survey covering 156,000 associates, 88% have rated themselves as very satisfied or satisfied, up by 85% uh, compared to the previous year. 78% of our associates are definitely likely or very likely to recommend Quest to their peers. This means a lot to us and we will continue to work towards further improving the associate experience. During the quarter, we announced three-way demerger of Quest Corp into three different independent listed entities, which uh, with each one of them, with, with, with each one capable of executing its individual business strategies. We are confident that it will significantly augment the value creation journey going forward with each business getting enhanced management focus and pursuing an optimal capital allocation strategy. We have filed the uh, scheme of demerger with stock exchange in February 24 
and moving on track i'll now hand over a call to kamal to give you more insights on financial updates thank you thank you guru good morning everyone and thank you for joining us today i'm pleased to share with you with uh, all of you that we are exiting the financial year on a high note backed by our strong financial performance with highest ever quarterly and annual ebitda our ability to maximize market opportunities evident in our results and we are seeing a solid momentum picking up in last four sequential quarters our fy24 revenues stand at 19100 crores a growth of 11% year on year such increase came across all platforms contributing sectors being bfsi manufacturing and retail primarily ebitda grew at 18% in fy24 to 694 crores a sequential year on year expansion in margin by 22 basis points such non linear growth came from margin expansion and cost initiatives taken across platforms including reduction in foundry losses year on year pack delivered for the year was rupees 280 crores a growth of 26% eps has grown by 24% year on year this is backed by strong ebitda growth across platforms aided by lower effective tax rates from the merger of subsidiaries during the year our cash conversion continues to be strong with operating cash to ebitda at a healthy 67% aided by a reduction of 4 days in dso which now stands at 53 days our gross debt is at its lowest level in last 5 years ending the year with 369 crores of gross debt a reduction of 162 crores during this fiscal with our both recommended final dividend of rupees 6 per share during the quarter our total dividend for the year clocks to be 10 per share with this the return to shareholders in the last 4 years as we rupees 488 crores in form of dividend let me now walk you through the quarter's financial performance by platform starting with workforce management revenue stands at 3476 crores registering a growth of 14% year on year and 1% quarter on quarter growth is predominantly in general staffing business with key sectors being manufacturing bfsi and retail ebitda has seen a growth of 2% quarter on quarter and 6% year on year at 91 crores ebitda margin percentage has been flat at 2.6% throughout the year the cost pressure on account of wage inflation with flat margins in general staffing businesses have been offset by increase in volume share of value added services in that platform coming to gts 588 crores revenue clock for the quarter an increase of 6% year on year and 3% quarter on quarter allstack continues its growth momentum in cxn business with 10% growth quarter on quarter our domestic bpm business in connect also showed a revenue growth of 4% quarter on quarter ebitda stands at 113 crores a growth of 19% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter such non linear increase in profitability as a result of change in geographical mix with bias towards international revenues coupled with high margin business moving on to operating asset management 695 crores revenue clock for the quarter a growth of 4% year on year and 2% quarter on quarter investment in sales in previous years in this quarter have resulted into good sales funnel and conversion for the quarter facility management including food services and telecom and seen good growth during the quarter EBITDA stands at 39 crores for the quarter a growth of 29% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter margin inflation is aided by change in business mix led by food and telecom businesses coupled with operating levels product led business revenue clock for the quarter is 119 crores a degrowth of 8% quarter on quarter while founded sales has grown by 13% quarter on quarter and 9% year on year achieving highest ever quarterly sales of 50 crores Founded break even during the quarter has led to EBITDA losses, excluding non-cash ease of ease of reduced to negative three crores, helping us meet our commitment to investors. Our basic business has seen some degrowth in spare services revenue during this quarter. As part of our strategy to focus and nurture our core businesses, we completed our divestment of our basic business QDG effective 31st March 2024 with an IRR of 15%. moving on to tax updates there are no material updates from the last quarter as the hearings for the respective assessment years in itat and drb have not yet commenced for financial year 1780 and 1819 our appeal is at itat and the next hearing is expected in july 
for the year 1920 and 2021 the company has filed objections before drg against the adjustment proposed by the tax office and the hearing for 1920 is scheduled in the current month few corporate updates for the year in line with the leader structure simplification strategy implementation of amalgamation of our fully owned subsidiaries connect mfx greenpeace post initial approval was completed during the year you are aware that our board approved the proposal to demerge the business into three independent listed entities each one capable of executing its individual business strategies we believe that this will enable value unlock to our shareholders in medium and long term scale the businesses to new high with enhanced management focus follow on optimal capital allocation strategy and attract separate investor base we have filed a scheme of demerger with stock exchange in february 2024 and we are progressing well on our plan with this i conclude on financial results and pass it back to the moderator for taking your questions thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the telephone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles the first question is from the line of balaji subramanian from ifl securities limited please go ahead okay so congrats on uh, a great quarter so i have a couple of questions so uh you did mention the drivers behind uh, the margin expansion oem and uh, gta segment so you know going forward you know how should one uh, look at the margin profile uh, and you know especially uh, the, the balance which you intend to strike between uh, revenue growth and uh, margin the second question would be on the four day reduction in dso which you talked about uh, which nearly adds uh, 200 crores to ocf so you know uh, what uh, exactly drove this and uh, is this the new normal going forward or uh, do you see uh, a room for further improvement thank you balaji for the first question on margin expansion in gts i would request pinaki to give its inputs followed by anand and for the question on dso and kamal will give his inputs over to you pinaki thank you uh, Good morning, Balaji. Uh, hope I'm audible. Yeah, you are. Good morning. Yes. So, uh, as per the margin expansion, Balaji, uh, uh, let me just step back a bit. Uh, if you go back even 16 quarters back, 2020 March to be precise, we had given a uh, kind of a driver that because we are at 16% margin that time, and Uh, around that time, we told that we will be at 16 to 18 percent kind of a range based on certain factors. So I think we are mostly at 18 percent. This quarter, we have just uh, gone a bit on that side. Just to step back on that, the reasons, the drivers for that are three, and they are not seasonal; they are structural. One is the geography mix. Uh, obviously, international business in GTS gives uh, us better margins. Then the domestic business, and if you see structurally over quarter on quarter, for example, if you see in Alset, we are at 74 percent in terms of international business in CSK, against 69 percent at this point last year. So there is a 500 basis point improvement there, and the growth in international business year on year has been 39 percent against an Alset overall growth of 20 percent. So the ratio is huge. more to us that business number 2 from a business mix perspective uh, even in the exm business which was uh, mostly domestic earlier the new booking just to show you that it's a lead indicator for the future new bookings 59% has been international in this quarter against 37% at this stage last year so the new bookings is potent for the future It also shows that from a geography mix perspective, hopefully that trend will continue. Next, we shall get into now the uh, service mix in terms of uh, the more higher value services. So you will find the transaction processing BPO, the collections uh, BPO, in connect. 
that growth is 24% in collection business, which is higher than the overall growth of the business on a weighted average level. Similarly, the uh, digitally driven businesses, whether the digital platform or the virtual sales office kind of uh, interactive uh, outbound businesses, the growth test on that has been more than the vanilla yellow kind of businesses. So from a mixed perspective also, it is getting more towards the software as a service platform as a service kind of businesses. So these two are structural things. things. The third is obviously right sizing the cost structure which we do on a regular basis. Where if you see the IDC and the SGMA has been pretty stable at a stable rate over the last four quarters. So hopefully the combination of these three business growth at the right geographies, more disproportionate share from the higher value services, and rationalizing the cost base, especially the SGMA, at a stable level, all three should contribute for the margin should be uh, in the kind of range that we are seeing today, from a sustainability perspective. Thank you. I'll give a pass on to Anand to give his inputs on the OEM platform. Thank you, Kushal. <coughs> Good morning, Balaji. This is Anand here from OEM. As Guru mentioned, in the last few quarters, you know, the leverage for us was focused on internal efficiency and we worked on a few customer contracts. And consistently, the last three quarters, you have seen the results on our return margin. Having said that, you also know some of our business within OEM has taken our team in play. But we are broadly confident uh, on an annualized basis. No, we are on trend. Thank you, Anand. Kamal, if you can just give me inputs about the operating cash flows and the improvement in DSO days. Sure, thanks. So, Balaji, as you know, uh, we have a mix of businesses, and the reason for reduction in DSO days and you know reporting the uh, committed OCF is actually three. First and foremost is the discipline working capital management policy that we've been running for uh, last now more than 18 months, which Guru also alluded in his speech. Uh, secondly, the mix. So we have the advantage of two of our business, which is general staffing, uh, where 70% of the business is collect and pay, and found it where uh, you know most of the collections are advanced before delivering the services. We service uh, other businesses like CTS and uh, operating asset management, where the working capital cycle is a bit higher. So as and when this mix changes a bit more towards uh, collect entry and advanced collection businesses, uh, we are, uh, you know, we are in an advantageous position to bring down our DSO and improve our OCS. And third is the divestment that we did during the quarter of QDG, which, which was a business with a higher DSO. So the combination of uh, all three that has led to this reduction in DSO. And the second part of question, uh, your question that whether it is a sustainable level, uh, level we do believe if we continue this discipline working capital management across the group, we'll be able to even further improve from the present business audience. Thank you. That's uh, very helpful. Thank you. <coughs> the next question comes from the line of Deep Shah from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so there has been a lot of... Uh, substantive improvement on the manufacturing front, uh, on the industrial front, uh, and, and you've seen a lot of reports coming out. You also alluded a bit to one of the reasons for your uh, growth in WFM. So two questions here. First, uh, is there any scope for better unit economics here, given that there is massive demand coming in? And second, you know, just uh, in, your, in your thought, how do you see this segment? Uh, today it is 14% for us, it was 12% last year. Could this be 20 percent? Could this be the right next two, three years? So some some tether on that would be very useful. Thanks uh, for the question, Deep. Uh, so you know uh, the way to look at it is, I think it's very clear that India is in an investment phase, and I'm sure I think it will reinforce as uh, we come out of the elections. Uh, if you look at the segment where the investments are happening are pretty uh, sharp in terms of you know the pub infrastructure, public utility, and uh, the capex which is being invested into, and all these segments should definitely has a very uh, intensified uh, labor or employment related manpower related activity that is going to gain traction. 
and manufacturing is one among them where uh, it is attracting a lot of investments and there are a few hubs where we are already you know actively working in manufacturing clusters so if you look at uh, our manufacturing by headcount we are we are almost close to about 70000 in terms of deployment which also i called out very specifically in my speech uh, we anticipate this investment and the trajectory would uh, you know continue at least two to three times of gdp in terms of the way gdp growth uh, the way it is going on so uh, that's the kind of growth what we would definitely see so let me get uh, lohit to add more to this so good morning i think that's a uh, that's a good question and an important question for india like guru rightly said uh, obviously manufacturing is being attracted from all over the world and there are different segments of modern manufacturing that we are seeing every day which is coming to india one large uh, change which is happening is that manufacturing which traditionally remained in the msme segment barring a few large core investments in core sector today mega plants are coming up with 1000 5000 10000 and even more people beyond that uh, in the last two years itself we've doubled the business from 33000 headcount to almost 70000 headcount now this is a business which is growing at almost 47 to 49% kagers uh, you are right it's the third largest segment for us and do we see this becoming even bigger yes absolutely uh one aspect in guru's commentary also you would have heard is something called job spots uh we've come out clearly by saying that we have to get closer to the hubs away from the cities where traditionally the staffing offices operated to industrial hubs and industrial areas uh where the industries exist where the new investment is coming and that's exactly where we can do a matching between the job seeker from the hinterland of india or from the agricultural part of india to the industrial uh, part of the movement uh, we have coupled this with a lot of technology investments in these centers and we are obviously aiding and growing our sourcing capabilities and growth as well uh, so this is a segment which we continue to very closely watch uh, and yes to your point that can it become even bigger than what it is uh, with a considerable uh, you know uh, market share for us yes absolutely uh sure sir thanks thanks so much for that comment so anything on unit economics here uh, is it is it uh, very different or or could it be better than say the otherwise price taking mechanism that we are currently uh, in so in traditionally in manufacturing unlike the services segment you have to grow on the basis of not just your sales capability but your sourcing capability the customer expects 100% of the new talent to be brought in by the company so first and foremost it's not everybody's game it can only be done by uh, firms which have very very solid sourcing capabilities and technology which can aid such sourcing along with the human capital that we've deployed we have almost 500 people in general staffing uh who are field recruiters and that's a massive number that we carry besides the technology that we've been creating for the last 7 years and we continue to investing in services you're right there's a lot of transition business also which comes along or a lot of migration business which comes along manufacturing doesn't come along with transition or migration business over the life of manufacturing the unit metric is slightly better though initially it starts a little on the lower side because you don't get migrations and you have to do it with your own sourcing capability for which you have to put investments so early days when you start it would slightly aid lower but as it catches up and at each of the plant you start to get heft in terms of numbers uh, the unit metric starts to improve and become better over time it can definitely beat the services economies as well uh, understood sir thank you thank you so much uh, for the detailed explanation very useful Uh, so the second question would be on found it so so tondrats on on the near break even that you stated uh, on your presentation uh, how should we look ahead your recruitment is going through a difficult time um, what, what should we think about say found it for next 2 3 years uh, would we run at break even are we okay to make some losses in marketing if required um, whatever your thoughts are just better understand given there are massive headwinds in this space Sure, <clears throat> there are some headwinds in the space, like you said, with hiring coming down in some sectors. But as the conversation in the last five minutes was, there are also 
sectors where hiring is happening at a, at a very healthy pace. So as founded, our objective is to make sure that we have enough business and customers coming in from across the sectors and therefore there's a concerted push to ensure that our volumes from non-IT also compensate for whatever limited reduction we will see in IT. That said, our starting point which is we are just on our journey of growth. So given our size and you know our new product coming into the market and our ability to gain market share with customers that we are already present in, uh, while there are headwinds in the market, we are very confident that you know we are at a size and position in the market where it shouldn't impact us too much. For the last three years, despite the headwinds in the market, we grew at a CAGR of upwards of 40% and we don't see any reason why we shouldn't aspire to grow at a similar pace. Uh, with respect to your question on profitability, yep, uh, we moved from about 95 crores that we lost in FI22 to about 23 to about 55 this year. And the objective clearly is to ensure that this number goes down to zero in FI25, which, which is going to be taken care of primarily from coming from growth. Uh, and most of the costs are stabilized in the system. As you know, in a subscription-led business driven by product, a lot of costs in terms of product development, etc., are front-loaded. We've gone through that phase. And from this point onwards, we don't expect our cost structure to vary significantly apart from uh, cost of sales and therefore whatever growth uh, comes in the business is going to be uh, enough sufficient for us to be able to maintain an operational break even for the year. Uh, understood sir, this was very useful. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shed with Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, am I audible? Uh, so may I request you to use your handset so your audio is very low. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Oh. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, congratulations, team, for a, for a great state of numbers. Uh, first, on the F, WFM side, um, if, if you look at last uh, uh, four quarters, we have been able to maintain our margins at 2.6. Uh, we understand that uh, the... IT side of the business is not taking up well. Uh, there are losses in North America, which were uh, likely to, you know, getting turned around uh, by the end of this year, sorry, in, in the fourth quarter. How should one look at margins now going forward, uh, given uh, any 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 color on the IT side and the North American operations? Uh, if you would like to uh, give us um, some color on that part. Thank you, Chintan, for your question. I request uh, Lloyd to give his input on this question, please. Sure. So, hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for that question. Good morning. First and foremost, I'll just take a minute to say that, you know, there have been key milestones already achieved this year uh, by our WFM business, and we are proud of the platform that they've created today. We've crossed the 400,000 mark in active headcount base. Overall, WFM has crossed the 450,000 mark. We are poised for a long-term growth in WFM, which we've already stated as part of our demerger plan to become the world's number one staffing company by volume, by headcount, and eventually also to grow our profitability along with it. In this year, there were challenges that we were facing. There are global headwinds and geopolitical scenarios, which have obviously uh, shrunk the business and margins coming out of the IT industry. Particularly within the IT industry also, it was the IT services. How that impacts our business and portfolio in WFM is, uh, we did two large businesses in Indian IT. One is the contract staffing business, as you know, and the second is the IT permanent recruitment business. IT permanent recruitment business itself on a year-on-year -year basis has lost around 17 crores from where we were one year ago in FY23, what we delivered as EBITDA to what we eventually mm -hmm. delivered in FY24. In spite of that, the core businesses, the staffing businesses, with its focus towards niche, digital, and predominantly in GCCs as a segment in India, has been able mm -hmm. to offset some of those losses. Uh, to your point uh, on, on margin pressures, uh, yes, WFM, especially with general staffing, continues to remain a tight margin play. Uh, we've been very proud that in spite of the fact that we've consistently grown our headcount and revenue, we've been able to now maintain the margin at about 2.6% uh, as we speak. With no further burn anticipated in U.S. Uh, uh, operations for WFM, 
we feel this would inch upwards by another 20 basis point coming closer to about 2.8% going forward. Uh, medium term to long term, we would like to take this to 3% or so. Sure. And uh, it's just on the bookkeeping side, uh, the tax rate, uh, tax outgo uh, because of the deferred uh, item uh, was uh, negative this, uh, this quarter and last quarter. Well, how should we look at tax uh, rate uh, for FI25 as a whole? Yeah, so come on this second. Uh, the tax rate rightly pointed out, uh, effective tax rate for FI24 is close to around 5% as compared to mm -hmm. FI23 where it was 22%. Primarily uh, because of the merger that we did during the current year and some of the benefits that flew along with it. Uh, mm -hmm. The guidance for next year uh, would be in a range of 10 to 11 percent effective tax rate because of the business mix that we see at present. Right, right. I'll join back in. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Miraj from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for taking my question uh, and congratulations on a great set of results, sir. Uh, I had a couple of questions, but uh, starting off with a clarification on to the previous question that you just answered, uh, you mentioned the tax rate would be 5% or 10% uh, I missed that. So 5% is what FI24 was. The next year's guidance uh, would be 10 to 11% I said. Okay, understood. Um, sir, uh, I had one, un uh, this one point I wanted to understand uh, that uh, we have a vision to reach a 5% consolidated EBITDA margin. Uh, to achieve this, uh, I wanted to understand what are the legs uh, that we need uh, in our business. So one would be the workforce management business reaching 3% uh, EBITDA margins and uh, found it is where we've already, our cash burn is stopped. So uh, are these the only two uh, factors uh, that will help us achieve the 5% um, or is there anything else also that needs to be kept in mind? So, uh, Viraj, uh, two, I think two big levers you already pointed out. Uh, found it obviously is the biggest one, uh, which uh, from a year-on-year -year perspective, as we have clarified on the call that we will move from uh, minus 56 to, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> net zero in FI25. And then, uh, you know, with the volume growth going into FI26, uh, found it should contribute with good margins to the overall margins. Uh, in the other two platforms which we did not discuss is where actually we've been seeing good margin trajectory. So the GTS business has almost reached uh, an upwards of 18.5% uh, EBITDA margin and which Pinaki explained the continuity of the same and the favorable geographic mix that we have got into. Uh, as far as the operating asset management business, uh, two businesses to point out there which have been doing very well for us uh, and helping us uh, in our margin trajectory upwards is the food business uh, which is going, uh, <coughs> which has grown uh, year on year and the telecom business which is in Veda uh, with the 5G implementation across the country, uh, that business is also contributing to the overall margin trajectory. So these are some of the business specific levers. There are a lot of operational levers, productivity and the tech investments that we have done over last uh, 12 to 18 months, which we'll continue to do and monitor uh, the operational performance to you know, move uh, towards our trend of uh, expansion of uh, uh, margins. Understood. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, the international business uh, uh, in uh, global tech solutions, that would attract close to 30% uh, margins. And uh, currently we are doing uh, 18 and a half. So what kind of mix are we looking at over here? And what kind of elevated margins would we see at that mix? Thanks, Milaj, for your question. I think uh, Pinaki would be able to give you a better color and better sense on the margins for this business. Pinaki, if you can give some inputs. Yeah, okay. So on a, uh, on a overall level, uh, what you expressed is correct, uh, but, uh, but the 30% again, one is on the international mix can get that. At the same time, that mix, uh, if I take uh, even in the EXN business, uh, the, basically the payroll business, the HR outsourcing business is also, also one can get that kind of margin. So it's more of a business mix issue. 
uh, obviously geography mix is a uh, percentage of that. But even in the core domestic business like Connect, uh, which is almost 100 percent or 95 percent domestic, we are also we are inching closer to this overall margin that 18 and a half percent that uh, that we are actually reporting at an overall level. Uh, so those are the drivers that uh, if you see overall from an industry perspective, the margin even of the bigger companies currently are between 13 percent to 20 percent back then the trading. So that's the range of possibility, right? So what the what more natural companies or bigger companies are delivered over a period of time. So we try to drive drive on all parameters that without committing a particular number, the range of possibilities are there. Understood. Okay. Just to add to that, uh, uh, Miraj, is that uh, you know if you look at international business mix, is move, has moved from 45 percent to 57 percent uh, compared to last year, uh, specifically in Alsex. So what happens is, uh, while we have a push on uh, sales focus on international business, uh, there is also a domestic business uh, which uh, you know aggressively being. Uh, uh, sold and pursued and the good order books and ACV. So we have to balance between both. So I think where we are today, we'll be able to probably, I think, sustain anywhere between 17 to 18 percent uh, EBITDA margins to continue with when with both the mix coming into. 17 into 18 would be sustainable thing ahead. And uh, just to reiterate this, uh, put it in a different uh, manner, uh, uh, somewhere close to 5% would be achievable in FI26. Would that be uh, a clear aim? We don't give a guidance on that specifically, but uh, if you look at from 3.42% where we started our year, we ended about 3.9 and on an average. Period. So I think on a, on a forward basis, maybe another 32-35% basis points is where we would anticipate considering all the mix, but it would be tough to put a number here. Okay, understood. And just one final question. So Miraj, what we can say is that there will be an absolute growth in EBITDA, but as you know, it's a combination of pathologic businesses with uh, various different margin profiles for different businesses and different growth profiles. So it's a very difficult for the management to give you a guidance on EBITDA margins per se, for the next two years, but obviously, we, as stated, we would be definitely growing the absolute EBITDA on a year-on-year -year basis. Uh, right, right, absolutely. I understood that that part now. Uh, so, okay, and one more thing, sir. Uh, when is the tentative NCLT filing, or is it already done? So, Miraj, we did uh, announce uh, the scheme on February uh, 16th. Uh, 2024 and since then we have applied for SEBI that's the first step and uh, we are on course once we receive the SEBI approval then we can uh, file the first motion to NCLT so we expect the overall process uh, from start to end to be a 12 to 15 month process and we just started we are probably just two and a half months into the process but as of now we are on course understood okay uh, all the best sir and congratulations uh uh, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Yash from Stallion. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, sorry, I joined the call late, so I don't know if I missed this. I request that you use your headset, sir. Your audio is slightly more filled, sir. Um, hi. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, I've joined the call late, so I don't know if this is already being uh, talked about. So I just wanted to uh, get a sense of the revenue guidance for the GTS and the O&M business going forward, like two years. So for the uh, revenue guidance on GTS, I would ask uh, Pinatki to give you some color on the business and uh, how it's going forward. And for the OM business, I would ask Anand to give his inputs. Anand, if we can start with Anand for OM business. Anand, yeah. Okay, so this is Anand here. So in the current financial year in FY24, we grew at 7%. Okay, so uh, this is on back of uh, certain operational levers we worked on, uh, on the crime profitability as we discussed in the past quarter. So I think we look for uh, you know, growth beyond this number. 
there are few more activities we are doing in terms of bringing the profitability. Uh, as of now, the order book looks strong uh, for this financial year, which we already, uh, you know, in the Guru's commentary, has been explained. Thank you. Thank you, Anand. Pinaki, if you can give us some inputs on the GTS on hands for the next year. Yeah, but we'll be careful not to use the term revenue guidance because I don't think we give revenue guidance for two years. But uh, we can take it if we just go by what happened in the past and uh, go to the last uh, three to four years. Consistently, we have tried to internally we have tried to go at a twenty percent plus listing. Uh, Some years we have been successful. Some years we have just fallen short, but. Uh, you'll find, I think, that the ADR will be around 18% over the last three, four years. And uh, there are natural issues, there are any other issues, but as we try to go into more profitable segments, more U.S. business, more international business, and that kind of services, so we always aspire to actually shoot uh, add on that kind of a mark. But I might call that guidance, but that is what we have tried and uh, Mostly we have been successful over the last few years. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Shet with Girik Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the follow-up. Uh, one one question on the product-led business. Uh, now the um, uh, that CDG business is uh, is um, you know um, excluded. Um, but um, this quarter, but we still see uh, you know 120 odd crores revenue reported. So I, 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 my question is basically whether there is uh, the CDG revenue is part of this uh, uh, part of revenue this quarter. Yeah, QDG revenue is part of this quarter uh, because 31st March is when we completed the transaction. Almost annualized okay. revenue from QDG for uh, your information was close to around 370 odd crores on a two year basis. Uh, that will get knocked off uh, in the 50 crore run rate in found it will be the uh, largely the revenue for the segment going forward plus the growth whatever you deliver. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Right, right. Okay. And uh, and uh, and on the working capital side any anything you want to highlight uh, the DSO you already mentioned uh, we also see a similar uh, some contraction in the payable side as well uh, for the year. Um, anything you, you want to call out how, how the business is shaping uh, given the mix, uh, whether it will be favorable uh, going forward or not, how, how, whether there is a scope for further improvement uh, in the side. So Chintan, I explained all the three reasons as to why we were able to reduce the DSOs and bring it to the present levels. Uh, right. I'll repeat myself. Uh, if you did not get it. So basically, it's a combination of business mix, uh, effective working capital management that we did uh, throughout the year, and also a divestment of QDG, which was a higher DSO business for us as compared to the other businesses. We believe that these are sustainable levels, and obviously, okay. you know, with such a large mix of businesses we have, there is always an opportunity to improve a certain percentage points from the present closing number. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you all the best. Very best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Miraj from Aryan Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up opportunity. I uh, just wanted to understand something on the founded business model side. Um, I believe uh, in the commentary we just mentioned that uh, the hiring uh, through founded has kind of slowed down in some sectors, but we have a subscription-based model. So how, how exactly do we uh, uh, anticipate growth coming in over here? Because already if we have a subscription-based model, if an annual or a monthly model, that would automatically result in more revenues. But uh, how, how does hiring factor in over here? <clears throat> Thanks, Mirai, for the question. So when we say we are a subscription model, the way it works is on the recruiter side, we charge them for the number of profiles, views that they buy from us. When hiring goes down, and the activity of hiring goes down, so typically people would not want to view as many candidates for their hiring cycle, and so they might buy lesser inventories. That's how we usually 
the uh, the slowdown in hiring activity impacts subscription. They might buy less inventory from us when they come up for renewal. However, the point I said earlier in my commentary was that at this point in time, we are still small enough to say even if the overall hiring activity goes down, driven by our superior product at this point in time once we launch 2.0, we still expect to grow our share of wallet with the customers that we are serving as well as being able to acquire new customers. So overall, what the companies might be spending on hiring uh, might go down, but given our size, scale and the new product, we still expect us to grow healthily over the next one, two years. The second side of the coin is we also get revenues from candidates. And based on the demand supply metrics, some of the jobs are higher, uh, you get more revenue from recruiters when the jobs are lower, you get more revenues from candidates. Accordingly, this year as the jobs went down, our revenues coming in from candidates have grown significantly. So there are two ways to make, we make money as a platform from uh, recruiters as well as from candidates. And that's how the competitive dynamics play as the job market either goes up or goes down. Understood. And could you also uh, just uh, give a small idea about uh, which uh, sectors are currently the largest contributors and founded for hiring? So IT remains a very large uh, sector for us from a revenue perspective. But historically, we've been, <laughs> we've been known for our strength in IT. However, we have a very stated and intentional plan to grow our business in non-IT, specifically the focus sectors that we've picked up in terms of PFSI, retail, and manufacturing. And we have, we have uh, intentional activities and go-to-market plans around these industries. And everyone from the board is watching revenues in terms of what is the contribution coming in from non-IT. But if you take revenues as they stand now, IT is the biggest contributor to the revenue. Understood. So, uh, would there be a differential uh, in the uh, charge that we levy to different sectors? Is that different or would that be uh, equal for everyone? Uh, so, uh, there are multiple pricing plans available. These are by industries, by geographies, etc. And, you know, I can get into the details of the pricing plan, but they are transparently available. But essentially, you can assume that the price that the companies or recruiters pay is dependent on uh, whether it's IT or non-IT or in cases whether it's geography. So there are people can buy plans for a particular state or particular country because we also operate in Southeast Asia, etc. Perfect. Understood. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. That's it for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Balaji Subramaniam. With IFL Securities, please go ahead, sir. Mr. Balaji, may I request you to unmute your line from your side, sir? Yeah. Um, so, you know, this is just on uh, uh, your healthy SPF generation and uh, growth debt uh, also coming off. Uh, so, how should we see uh, payouts going forward? As in, uh, is there an intent to uh, step up dividend payments or uh, consider doing a buyback or something? That would be it. Sure. So, Balaji, we have our stated capital allocation policy and the dividend policy out there. Uh, the first and foremost priority is to reduce the debt level which we have done. You see, in last five years, cumulatively, we've reduced 700 crores of debt. Uh, in the last financial year, we've reduced 150 crores of debt, and uh, the gross debt right now uh, is at around 370 crores, which for our scale and size of our business is a comfortable level. Uh, on dividend, uh, since last two years, we've paid 8 rupees uh, per share as dividend, and this year with the proposed uh, final dividend, it's up to 10 rupees. So we'll continue to, uh, you know, do three things. Uh, optimize our operating cash flows, retire as much debt, as possible and uh, you know return the balance money to the shareholders in line with our stated dividend policy thank you monitor if you can check if there are any further questions
Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Raghuram NS with Your India Ventures. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having um, uh, my question. Uh, I just wanted to check on the GTS side only. Uh, one was about uh, like uh, how you guys have mentioned about the ACB. In the EXM vertical of Allsec, that's a significant uh, sales pipeline of 37 crores of ACV that's been mentioned. And uh, CXM also, the ACV that seems to be in the pipeline is about 40 crores. Is that something that's sustainable going forward or is it just a one-time kind of a thing that's, that seems to be happening in that business? Thanks, Raghu, for your question. I'll ask uh, Pinati if I can give you some inputs. Thanks, Raghu, uh, for the question. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, consistently also uh, uh, what we have done is that over the last few years that uh, most of the sales pipeline that has been there were not one-timers. Those were generally long-term kind of programs. So I'll take the, both the segments, the CXM and EXM separately here. On EXM uh, or on CXM, the customer experience management, most of the pipeline are uh, North America centric multi-year kind of cases. So we have mentioned only the ACV figures. So uh, as and when we contractually start that, so hopefully it will play out the length of the contract in terms of the number of years uh, that that ACV will be there for. Uh, because you know the nature of that business in CXM, especially North America, is generally long term. On the ESM side, Again, most of the business pipeline that has been there or the contracted revenue that is there, the ACV figure that we have given is for enterprises. Mostly those are enterprises where the payroll transition we are doing. Right? So, so like absent any completely unforeseen circumstances, so those also are supposed to be long-term contracts and uh, as in where our income is affecting. And from a structural growth perspective, so this is how we are actually driving the sales and you are seeing the mix getting more into international, even in the So obviously with the dollar revenue com coming in, we need to translate to that to INR. So that uh, effect also we are getting in. So that is the reason for that kind of a pipeline. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for that, Pinaki. But my question was more from a, for the last three or four quarters that you can, that if you go back in Allsec, uh, it was ACBs of normally about seven to ten crores in EXM on a quarterly kind of basis. When I see thirty-seven crores, it's it's a it's a, it's a very very uh, encouraging uh, number. Uh, just to just to keeping in mind uh, what has happened in the last four quarters or something. So that was the main reason why I asked. So it was not. What happens, Raghu, You know that industry actually. What happens is that. We pursue deals for two, three quarters, especially on CXM, you will find that uh, these are a bit long gestation, right? So so sometimes the fruition comes after three or two or three uh, kind of uh, quarters. Uh, so, but uh, if you want to translate, that's what I'm saying. I can assure you more about the sustainability of that revenue going forward, but some quarterly pluses and minuses of ACV booking would be there because that's also a function of when a customer concludes their contract in terms of a booking, right? So, so, so obviously, I will not say that you extrapolate 37 crore every quarter. At the same time, you do not be 5 to 7 crores also, right? So, but the revenue would be more in the range that you are seeing now in terms of growth. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the question and answer session. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kushal Maheshwari for closing comments. Thank you for the engaging uh, discussions over the call. I would like to hand over to Mr. Gurprasad for his closing remarks. Thanks again for joining us for Q4 earnings call. I would like to once again highlight that our consistent effort towards new logo addition 
SGNA rationalization and operational sharp operational execution will continue to be robust and we will continue to scale new heights in coming quarters. Thanks for joining. Thank, Thank you. Me. On behalf of IFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.